Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy Wells, and I am honored to be with you here today to be part of such an incredible event with wonderful guest speakers from all over the world. And I'm going to be presenting on the topic of nurturing loyalty through uncertain times and focusing on how brand strategy plays an important role in making your property and your brand one that guests rave about and want to visit over and over again. A little bit about me. I'm a partner at Longitude, an industry-recognized and award-winning hospitality brand and design group. Our team has helped countless brands all over the world conceptualize, design, and activate their brands in many different ways across many different guest touch points. I love speaking and sharing ideas at events such as these, and I've had the honor of being a keynote speaker at some great conferences and seminars over the years. I've also authored a book called Future Hospitality. This was published earlier this year, just before the pandemic hit, and it's been shipped internationally. It's received a lot of great feedback, and we've almost sold out all of our copies. In the second edition print, I plan on adding additional chapters related to the new normal, as a lot of people call it, and how this new normal will impact hospitality, travel, and tourism sectors moving forward. I also host a podcast called Future Hospitality Podcast, and it's an in-depth series of interviews with the brightest minds in hospitality. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or SoundCloud. Over the years, we've worked with and have built relationships with many of the leading hospitality companies around the world. Through that time, I've noticed a common thread that ties all of these successful brands together. Simply put, they've put an intentional focus on creating a brand strategy and a story from the very beginning and threading that through the entire guest experience, the staff culture, SOPs, marketing, and much more. Doing this puts their team and all stakeholders at an advantage. Their guests love doing business with them. They have raving and loyal fans, and they tell all their family and friends to visit. That's what we all want, right? There's many other benefits to leading with the brand strategy. But what's the best way to approach that for your property and, and or properties? We're going to be discussing that today. But first, I want to give a brief snapshot and overview of our industry, where it's been, where it is right now, and then discuss how it's going to move forward. This forward progress will require a shift in how many of us measure success, but it's a worthwhile investment. So first, we're gonna cover the status of the industry. So leading up to the pandemic, there was a hotel bubble beginning to grow. Many industry leaders predicted 2020 would be a year of steady growth still. However, the curveball that is known as the coronavirus was unexpected for almost all of us. And it could mean a permanent shift in consumer perceptions and behavior related to travel, lodging, and tourism, forcing this hotel bubble to burst, but in a way that no one could really expect. The pandemic hit hard and fast, and I hope it will end just as quickly. However, it won't be without industry-wide casualties. The hotel, travel, and tourism industries are among some of the hardest hit. These industries thrive on community, travel, and social activity. So when a new concept of social distancing, distancing was introduced, of course there's going to be trouble for us all. The coronavirus has already had more of a severe impact on the hotel industry than September 11th and 2008 recession combined. There's been industry-wide layoffs, room cancellations, and dramatic drops in occupancy rate, ADR, and RevPAR. Some forecasts don't predict a strong recovery until well into 2020. So... What can we learn from all of this? Well, there's a number of different things I think we can learn, lessons that we should learn, and I'm gonna cover just a handful of those right now. First of all, hotel design and architecture may never be the same, especially regarding large public spaces. I believe that the way guests interact and access your property will change due to consumer needs and potentially even government regulations. Now is the time to be planning for these types of experiential changes so that you're not caught off guard if and when that comes. We also need to be considering smart accessibility for our guests and for the masses, such as voice-activated room entry, touchless elevators, hands-free check-in and check-out. Think about introducing room designs that include touch-free bathroom and shower layout. There's a lot of different ways that we can do this. The new challenge that we're facing is finding a balance of isolated concentration for our guests and balancing that with productive and meaningful collaboration. 
Also, communication is paramount. It's been more important than ever during this pandemic to preserve our our presence online during this outbreak. You know, consistent, consistently responding to any requests from, um, you know, governments, organizations, business groups, and helping maintain a positive image um, in general to the public. This emphasis on marketing is to ensure that travelers have a are, feel comfortable and that they have a clean, secure atmosphere for safe and efficient travel during the recovery period. Channel management can depart from previous patterns for a time. You know, during this time, there hasn't been a lot of bookings. So the sole focus for many have been to anchor your hotel's brand position and image in the marketplace. And that's accomplished through key strategic messaging. That way, you can expect a market improvement during this recovery process for your hotel. You're going to have a much faster recovery rate if you can focus on these things. Also, what we can learn is there needs to be flexibility in food and beverage. Food and beverage is no longer an afterthought, as, as it's been for many hotels in the past. At least, it shouldn't be an afterthought. The experience of a hotel property can be greatly elevated with, a thought, with thoughtful implementation of a cafe, restaurant, or rooftop bar. But we can't stop there. Off-premise dining is growing, and it will continue to do so, and it's already done so in, in the restaurant industry. Just like most successful restaurants have adapted to the shifting consumer trends, so must hotels. The future of successful pandemic-proof hotel food and beverage programs will leverage things such as strong catering programs, to-go friend, to-go menus that are friendly and easily um, delivered, and third-party delivery platforms. Also, we need to learn how to reimagine our spaces. What should the guest experience look like in light of social distancing? How should hotels be designed and updated? How should public spaces be utilized and designed? We need to be thinking about all of these things going into this new era for our industry. Is there room for technology to help better leverage touch-free access throughout the property? Things worth considering. Also, one that's familiar to us all is revenue management strategy. We need to be ensuring that our revenue management strategy is on point. Times like these are when hoteliers are tempted to slash room prices and give away anything they can to survive. However, that might not always be the answer. A smart hotel revenue manager understands that you should follow the market on the way down and lead the market on the way up. Recently, I was talking with a revenue management consultant, and he said, when cancellations were coming through fast and furious at the beginning of this pandemic, supply skyrocketed and prices fell. So as we recover, people need to realize that as we make it through this crisis, at least for the time being, They'll begin to, you know, we're already seeing more increase in summer vacations, and the reverse is going to happen. It's going to reverse course. Bookings will increase. Prices should increase. And I say should because I believe a majority of hoteliers are going to be sleeping or caught off guard if they're, not, if they're not paying attention. They'll be so excited that bookings are coming through again that they won't raise their rates much to match the demand. And the biggest mistake that we see hoteliers make regarding revenue management is not raising their rates high enough during the times of high demand. So we need to make sure we have a constant pulse on our comp set, we understand room costs, and we're looking into future forecasts as well. Beyond this, things that we can learn is making a plan for the future. So as we move forward towards a future that's hopefully COVID-19 free, and we're going to get past that eventually, we should learn from our mistakes and oversights that we've done in the past. If we do, we can emerge stronger than we were before. I like the saying, the strongest steel is forged in the hottest fires. Sometimes it takes a little sweat to make us actually change, right? Next and finally, we need to dial in our position and brand strategy. This crisis exposed many shortcomings in our industry and in our properties. Some hotel brands received tremendous amount of support during this crisis. Their loyal fans went to bat for them, helping them get through this difficult time together. Even staff were all hands on deck and rallied together to come out stronger in the end. However, unfortunately, there were many brands that did not experience this. And if your brand did not experience this, you need to ask yourself and be honest with yourself and ask the difficult question, why? Why did that not happen? This cannot be an afterthought and will need proper attention and focus. We need to know your precise position in the market and have a pivot strategy and action plan in place. You need to ensure that your guests 
are con- you're connecting with your guests on a more than just basic needs, and you need to make sure you're communicating effectively through that the right channels as well. So how can we create a strong brand strategy and market position for your property? That's what we're getting ready to dive into right now. First of all, we need to make sure that we're all understanding what the term brand means. When you mention the word brand to someone, the first thing that comes to mind is probably a logo or a color palette or maybe a slogan or a marketing campaign. But the truth is, if you ask 10 different people what branding is, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. While all these things may contribute to your brand, they are not your brand. If you're new to advertising, marketing, understanding industry terms can get very confusing. The truth is that marketing terms can be convoluted and vague, even if you've been in the industry for years. For the purposes of this presentation, I want to clear up the confusion and misconceptions. Clear definitions ensure that everyone is on the same page, which will help when it comes to understanding the advice I'm about to give you making important decisions about your identity, and also building a strategy for your business. At Longitude, we prefer to define your brand as your reputation. Just as you and I have a personal reputation of family and friends and acquaintances, so does our business. How we look, what we say, and what we do all contribute to our reputation. People make assumptions about us. We develop certain perceptions of each other and choose to trust or not trust someone based on their reputation, or rather, their brand. So, if we continue down that line of thought, we define branding as the actions, intentional or unintentional, that contribute to your reputation. Your brand is how you get people to care. It bridges the gap between your business and the customer's perception of the value that you offer. Your brand is how you differentiate yourself from your competitors, all of them, not just the ones you're competing directly with. Your brand is your tool for making good business decisions and will help guide you through any challenge your business may face. A brand strategy will tell you what you should be doing and even more importantly, what you should not be doing. A a strategic brand will help you avoid wasting money on things that don't matter. So how do you do this? How do you build a brand worth booking? Well, first of all, we need to understand and get to know our guests. We need to also have a compelling position, and we need to execute our brand promise and impact the entire guest journey every time. So that's what we're going to cover right now. First, getting to know our guests. A basic rule of marketing is that you start any branding, positioning, or marketing project or initiative with a single question, do I know my guests? When thinking about how well you know your guests, it's not the idea of having data on their generic demographic snapshot or anything like that, although that's going to be helpful. But we need to think about who loves your brand already. Why did your boutique hotel strike passion in their choice? Why did they you know, make a purchase to stay with you instead of someone else? Would they book again? If not, why not? What are their hobbies? What are their interests? We need to ask them what that one thing that they enjoyed most about their stay was. Ask them even before they leave. These types of questions will help you better understand your ideal guests, what it is that makes them tick. The most effective and quickest way to sell more is to match your guests' needs and wants with what you offer. When it comes to smaller, independent, soft-branded, or boutique hotels, this probably means the location, uh, nostalgia around the history, You know, maybe it's the sites and the travel and tourism that's around, and there's so many other factors that play into that and large hotels can't deliver that sometimes on scale. That's what makes boutique and independent hotels so unique. So here's a great example. Think about a traveler who wants to stay at a quaint boutique bed and breakfast here in, in, you know, even in the United States, maybe on the Mississippi River. They're coming from the West Coast, they're far away, they just want to experience some historical landmarks and see what it was like, you know, even back in the 1800s, you know, in, in America, the exploration that's happening. So what are they going to remember about your boutique hotel experience? You know, what's, what's that one thing or a few things that they're going to make, make them want to recommend it to their friends and family? You know, is it maybe the stairwell within your, your property? It was built in the 18, early 1800s, and it just made them feel the presence of being there and, and the history, the rich history that's there. And maybe that's a unique feature of your property. Or maybe it's the way that your, your staff accommodated them and the, the words that you use and, and giving them the history of, of your property and, and how it played into the settlers then. There's a lot of different ways that you can 
create a guest experience that someone's going to remember. And then you can ask them if that's, you know, and, and, and verify that those are the things that are, are working for you. Your brand needs to be tied to a number of different features. However, to survive, those features must be what your guests actually want, what they need, and what they, are, they find interesting. Next, we need to find a compelling position. Positioning is vital to any business, especially hotels, due to the competing f competition being so fierce. There are likely many options you can choose from, or our guests can choose from when planning their trip. So what sets yours apart? What makes yours the clear choice? Without a clear position in the market, you won't have these answers. If you can't find a clear and compelling reason why someone should stay with you, then it's very likely that travelers and guests will agree. A hotel's position can be seen in two ways, the perspective of the hotel's management and that of the guest. The hotel's management needs to have a firm grasp on the concept and the position set forth. Its marketing and advertising efforts must be clearly articulated and, and not only what the hotel offers, but also the offerings, how they're unique from the competition. For example, a hotel may offer a luxurious package of services, perks, and amenities in an effort to attract business travelers. However, if the room rate is higher than travelers are willing to pay, then that brand might not be positioned properly for the majority of business travelers in that area. So instead, you might want to focus maybe on more leisure, luxurious-minded travelers that are not as price sensitive. That's a, just one example. And another example, if a hotel has positioned itself as the best convention hotel in the market, guests will expect meetings to be hosted and executed flawlessly. Should that not occur, the hotel's position from that customer's perspective, well, in reality, it'll just be an average, basic convention hotel or worse. So to sum it up, you need to have a truly unique position in your market, but not only that, you need to be able to back it up with the right actions as well. That brings us to our next point, executing on your brand promise. But what is a brand promise? A brand promise is a statement that your business shares with your customers, helping them to formulate an expectation of what it's like to do business with you. Your brand acts as an extension of your positioning statement. Your brand promise is a commitment to your customers and to your employees. Everyone knows what it's like to have a promise broken. Too many broken promises can destroy your business. If your customers or your employees do not believe in your business, then how can they feel comfortable supporting or purchasing from you? We've already established that the crux of your brand is your reputation. Your reputation is built from a string of interactions that your customers have had with your brand. One broken brand promise and or negative interaction can certainly outweigh several positive ones. When a brand does follow through with all of its promises, the result can be happy employees, loyal customers, and it's just a win-win for everybody all of whom are ready to advocate on behalf of the business and to help your business succeed. On the other hand, when a brand breaks its promises, it also shatters the trust of stakeholders, staff, customers, and even just the general public. This can lead to a damaged reputation, which is hard, if not impossible, to repair sometimes. High employee turnover, and it can also significantly reduce your revenue. Broken brand promises lead to a slow decay of a business whereas the promises that are kept are the building blocks of healthy, profitable, and businesses that have loyal guests. Another aspect we need to consider is the full guest journey. Again, I mentioned we worked with dozens of leading hospitality food service business all over the world, and all of the most successful hospitality brands have one common denominator. They provide top-notch customer service and guest service at every point in the customer journey. Even if these businesses are not award-winning luxury or Michelin-rated restaurant, they still strive to offer that five-star experience that, that guests thoroughly enjoy and never forget. This emphasis on the guest experience helps hospitality businesses attract new customers and build lasting relationships with the current guests so that they never even have to consider visiting a competitor. The guest journey consists of five different phases. One, planning their stay. Two, the first impression or the approach. Three, the actual on-site experience. Four, ending on a high note. And then five, the follow-up. So first, when they're planning their stay. One great story, a family of three were planning a trip to visit a Ritz-Carlton hotel. And, you know, Ritz-Carlton is very well known for their service and hospitality. 
However, before arriving, the, the guest expressed some dietary concerns for one of the members of their family. The executive chef offered to create a menu specifically for this family, and they agreed. So when the family arrived, the chef went to greet them and share his menu ideas. He soon discovered that the special diet was actually for a couple's beloved dog. While the chef could have reacted negatively, he chose instead to go the above and, and beyond and, and took extra care of the dog throughout the stay. That's a great way uh, whenever they're planning their stay, you need to be on top of their mind there and make go and be above, and, above and beyond even during that, that time in their journey. The customer's journey starts before they ever walk into your doors. In fact, it starts well before they even end up on your website. The journey begins when he or she decides that they need a vacation. This realization can come from multiple places, whether it's a coworker's announcement of an upcoming trip or a family member's retelling of their own getaway or just a stressful day at work. Or even right now, you know, everyone's being cramped up in their homes um, with the pandemic. You know, these days it's even more likely for someone to want to go on vacation just by browsing social media or just thinking about how awesome it would be to book a trip. After all, there's a seemingly overwhelming never-ending stream of people ready to share photos and memorable moments on their trip, and you can see all that on Instagram or Facebook. Due to the influence that social media can have on travel and tourism, you want to make sure that you offer plenty of details, stories about your service, descriptions of the amenities, and gorgeous pictures of your property. Making sure that this is a priority is one of the most impactful ways that you can help ensure that when someone is planning their stay, they're planning it at your property. Next, the first impression. This is the approach to your property. When someone's walking up to your doorstep, when, it, when a guest is just arriving, how do you make them feel? What is the wow factor that they're getting from your property? You want to make sure that you make a strong first impression. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, when they come up to check in or the valet service you offer, the arrival is critical. You only have one chance to make a good first impression, and you don't get that chance back. So make sure it's a good one. Next, the on-property experience. There are many, many different touch points here, and this is often an area that people focus on a lot. Hospitality, service, cleanliness, atmosphere, amenities, food and beverage, and more. All of these play an important role. Going be up, above and beyond the call of duty is extremely important. Another family uh, that was staying at a Ritz-Carlton resort, another story, one of the hotel employees noticed that there was a five-year-old girl in the family that had a bucket list or a bucket full of shells from the beach, but she still looked kind of sad and disappointed. When the employee asked and inquired what was wrong, the little girl infor informed her that she was still looking for a pink starfish and she just could not find one. She was so sad about it. The employee the next day created a map and gave it to the girl and said that it would lead her to a treasure. And the little girl returned after her treasure hunt from the beach, and with a big smile on her face, there was a pink starfish in her bucket. And she carried that starfish and the map around with her for the entire remainder of their stay. That made for a really unique, special, and memorable guest experience for that girl and her family. Unfortunately, with the on-property experience, this is where many brands spend all of their focus, and it's important for sure, but they don't oftentimes put as much effort into the, all of these other uh, steps of the full customer journey. So you want to make sure that you don't only focus on this. Next, you want to end on a high note. What are some kind words or, or things you can say as your guests are departing? You know, what's, what's the experience like when they're departing? Is it easy automated checkout and makes it really simple for them? Um, you know, think about the different types of experience making that final positive impression. Um, you remember that story I told just a minute ago about the Ritz-Carlton and the dog uh, with the dietary needs. Well, um, another part of that story was at the end of the family stay, the chef also presented the dog with its own box of treats to take home. And that's what I call going above and beyond to deliver a great experience. Finally, the follow-up. This is where remarketing comes into play, where reputation management, surveys, reviews, and retargeting to past guests comes into play. It's really important to maintain that relationship. Promoting a positive word of mouth will increase brand loyalty. And eventually, you want to turn loyalty into advocacy. The follow-up is important because if you've delivered on all the other steps in the journey, this is where you can turn a loyal guest into a brand advocate, someone that's just a raving loyal fan. Strategies and tools to consider. 
Uh, you know, you might, after your guests leave, encourage them to leave a review on your hotel as quickly as possible when it's fresh in their mind. This increases the likelihood that they will write a review. Also, it increases the chance that they will post a photo alongside the review, which provides you with some good user-generated content. This can be as simple as sending a quick follow-up email using tools such as Revenate, Review Pro, or Trust You, or sending a text message such as, such as Did you enjoy your stay with us? Writing a quick review, please write a quick review to tell us about it. In this message, you should also thank them for their stay and encourage them to keep up with your hotel and keep, them, keep it in mind for their next getaway. This small ask may be exactly what they need to share their experiences with others. You should also keep in mind you don't want your customer's visit to be one time and then they never come back. Depending on how often your customer travels, the nature of their visit, it may not be possible for them to come back regularly. However, by following up, you can certainly encourage repeat business. So you want to send them things like special discounts or notify them of special events at your hotel. Even if they came the first time for business, maybe they will want to come back for a vacation or a, you know, a New Year's Eve party or some special event. Regular communications coupled with an amazing guest experience will help create a strong relationship between you and your guests. In conclusion, the road ahead is no doubt very difficult and the horizon is hard to see. However, in the, it will end eventually. Now isn't the time to set on our hands. The leaders and companies who are purposeful, driven, tenacious through this time will be the ones who emerge leaps and bounds ahead of the competitors. Leverage this time. What many consider dark, hopeless time for the hospitality industry can be turned into a vibrant time of growth for others. Adversity and struggle are often the prerequisites for the most innovative and ex exponential times of growth. Our industry will emerge stronger than before, but it will require us to work together to solve big challenges. While many will hang their heads low, let's keep our chins up. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope you found value in it. And please feel free to reach out to us if you, have, if you want any help elevating your brand. Our team is always willing to share notes and ideas with you. And you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And you can check out longitudebranding.com. And we're on all the popular social media networks as well. Thank you, guys. Cheers.